It was unfortunate that before I became Secretary of Health, I was Assistant Secretary of Health. And at that point in time, sometime in March 2016, I was already objecting to the uh, introduction of dengue vaccine based on the following reasons. Number one, pilot study of a new vaccine is usually a small group, 20,000 to at most 40,000. This uh, vaccine had clinical trials for 20 years covering 40,000 people only. Why will you give it suddenly to 1 million children in one given year? I do not, we do not introduce, and I told that to my program managers, and that was um, unwritten law in the EPI. We do not introduce new vaccines during election year, because no matter how good that vaccine is, the introduction during election year will taint it as a hidden agenda of somebody. So that is why we do not mix health and politics. It will destroy the vaccine even if it is very effective and it is very safe. And number three, introduction to the private sector first before government public health program. Because, as uh, pointed out by Dr. Liechon, in the private sector, there's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. The doctor sees the patient, follows up the patient, and they can easily monitor all patients given that vaccine. And th uh, the last, but not the least, is the social preparation that is needed for the rollout of these vaccines. It takes one or even two years to prepare the community, to prepare the health workers, logistical needs, the cold chain, the training, the human resource, the, vaccine, uh, the syringes, needles, the risk communication, etc. one to two years. There was no program in EPI that took shorter than that. And now, when I became health secretary, I'm sorry to say, and um, uh, I would like to tell this, that it was very difficult for me to implement this program. But I had no recourse. I was already on damage control. People were telling me I wanted to stop the next uh, delivery because only 200,000 was delivered in March. The next delivery will be in August and in January. I wanted to stop that, to save the Filipino 2 billion people. But people, even in Congress, were telling me, you will go to, to jail, doctora, if you do not implement this program. Because it, there is a contract, you have to uh, honor that contract. And the expansion to Region 7, and uh, whatever decision, I had to vet it to an expert panel because I do not want to appear that I made a unilateral decision or arbitrary decision because when I was assistant secretary, I was already objecting to the rollout of this vaccine. So the expert panel gave their go signal to expand to region seven and uh, <laughs> the WHO came out with the guidelines in the implementation of this vaccine. We know that WHO does not make endorsements, no, because that would make them appear like they're advertising or they're, uh, they have commercial interest in Without this vaccine. Giving. They suggest and they take up findings from research and summarize it and make scientific conclusions. So when they came out, in July 29, 2016, that this vaccine is safe, this vaccine is efficacious, it will save a lot of people hospitalization, and it was licensed by the FDA. At that point in time, Your Honor, the Filipino people, I had no choice but to implement the immunization program. And what uh, Congressman Harry Roque has um, uh, 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 accused me of being flip-flop is because of that. I was really 
worry in implementing this program. I dilly dallied. That was intentional because of the issues that were raised by Dr. Dance and his team and Dr. Liachon in the April or May, March letter to the Secretary of Health. There were issues on long-term safety. And so I had to really be very, very careful, go the extra mile, uh, extraordinary diligence in implementing this particular program. And I'm glad I did it. I did it with dilly-dally, with flip-flopping, and delaying as much as possible the implementation of this particular program. And last but not the least, may I say that the process, I want maybe uh, Senate and Congress to look at the process by which we introduce new vaccines. It should not have political interference. If you mix politics and health, it's really a disaster. So the process by which the new vaccine was introduced was messed up. You have uh, products uh, registration and uh, it was not FEC approved yet, and yet they were buying already. So that created a lot of pressure on all the people who will approve the FEC exemption and a lot of pressure on the people that will implement the program. Imagine three billion worth of vaccines that were already in the pipeline for procurement and you will disapprove, disapprove the exemption. You will disapprove the program. You will disapprove the rollout. So it's really very difficult. This is one of the most difficult things I have to do in the 29 years that I have been in government, Your Honor. I'm sorry to say that. 